Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video we're going to be talking about string methods and concatenation of strings. Now we've dealt with strings a little bit before. I've showed you guys a few things we can do with them but I just want to show you a few other properties of strings because there is actually a lot and there's a lot of things that you kind of need to learn to deal with them properly and that's also something you're going to be doing a lot in JavaScript is manipulating strings and user input and all of that. So what I want to do is um, kind of have an example here where we're going to get the user to type something and we're going to modify the string they type in and just print it out and show you what it looks like. So to do this, we're going to say, you know, I probably should have kept this from the last time var text equals in this case, I guess we'll say document dot get element by ID dot uh, what was it value? I think it was value. OK, so let's change this now to be IMP for input. And what I'm going to do is simply just console.log, or actually we'll put that value in this output tag. So what we'll say is output dot inner HTML equals, and in this case, text. Now let's just look at this example quickly to see how this works. I'm also going to talk about this page in a second. So let's refresh this. Let's type hello. And then we can see, obviously, it shows up down below. Now, this is where I'm grabbing some of these string methods from. This just has a nice list of them. I'll try to leave a link to it, but remind me if I forget, which is likely. So there's methods like starts with substring, substring, to local, lowercase, to string, to lowercase, to uppercase, trim. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll show you what some of them do and why we might even actually want to use them. So the easiest one to illustrate is to uppercase. Now you guys can probably guess what this is going to do, but essentially whenever you have a string object, which in this case text is because this right here is going to be storing some string value, right? This is going to be equal to a string. So text now is storing some string, which means that I can actually manipulate the variable text by calling, you know, some string methods on it. So let's do this and let's refresh. So when I do that and I type, let's say hello, we can see we get hello now in all uppercases. So what to uppercase does is essentially take this string and create a new string that is completely uppercase letters with whatever this string was. Now, if I decide to add, you know, an uppercase O at the end, we still are going to get this because everything just goes uppercase. Now, the same works for to lowercase like that. So let's look at this. So if I go to lowercase and I type low, then we're going to get lowercase hello. So this is often useful, especially when you're asking maybe a question or something that could be right or wrong, because you don't know if someone's going to type in the answer with uppercases or with lowercases, or maybe, you know, say they're going to type in the answer to a question, like maybe the answer is blue and they type blue with a capital B. Well, is that wrong? If the, your answer that you had was blue with a lowercase B, no, the answer is still correct. But if you're comparing, you know, blue like this, with let's say something like blue, obviously, you know, these two are not the same. So what you would do is take that user's input, make it all lowercase. So then that way you can compare if the value of your two strings are actually the same. So that's where we use two lowercase and dot uppercase. Now, what we can actually do is starts with and ends with as well. And this is going to give us a Boolean. So starts with is going to tell us if the string starts with a certain character. So what we need to do is inside of here, put the character we want to see if it starts with. Now, maybe we want our string to start with a number sign, or maybe we want it to start with an at sign, like if we're doing a mention of someone on social media or something. So what I can do is refresh this. And now if I type, say, hello, we're going to get the value false. But if I type at hello like this, we get the value true because our string started with this character. Now, same goes with ends with. We have ends with um, we can use that same character again. So in this case, we'll do hello, false hello with one of those at the end and what are we why are we not getting um, correct here let's see if this works hello no. hmm interesting why we keep getting false let me look at this okay so we got true there I think I actually had a space afterwards and that's why it wasn't working and that's actually the next one I'm going to talk about so notice here we're getting true but if I add a space then we get false so I think that's what was happening was essentially this string has a space at the end so that's why that wasn't working so actually what I want to show you now is how can we get rid of that space? So in that last instance, right, our string actually did end with this at sign. But since we had a space at the end, it wasn't counting because it was going to look like something like I think we had like hell at like that. So this was our string. So obviously we see it ends with this, but there is a space. So how can we get rid of any of those spaces at the end or at the beginning of that string that we don't want? 
Well, this is where we can actually use a method called trim. Now what trim is going to do is simply remove any leading or trailing white spaces from our string. So this is really useful because sometimes maybe someone's typing in their name or something and they type in like space hello. Well, you don't want to store space hello, you just want to store hello. So in this case, actually, let's refresh this. And if I do hello and like a bunch of spaces, um, we're get, okay, so we're obviously going to get false because there's a bunch of spaces. But let's do this same example. So hello at and then a bunch of spaces and click. Well, our answer is true because we actually removed all of these spaces when we did this trim here. So that's what that does. It actually removes any spaces. I think a better example might be if we just actually print out text.trim and I'll do some leading spaces. So if I go like hello and just do a bunch of spaces here, then technically when we printed this, it should be like spaced over a bit, right? But when we run this, we just, oh, well, I got to refresh this. Let's go hello do this, we just get hello, there's no spaces before that because we trimmed off all of those spaces. So that's what those methods do. Now notice that I used two of those in combination with each other, right? So I had dot trim, which returns to me a new string. So that's going to give me that hello without all those spaces there. So it removes all of those. And then what I did was dot ends with like that, right? So what these methods do is they don't modify the original string, they actually create a new one that can be used in whatever context you want, right? So if I have this, you know, let's do this trim, what I'll do next is I'll just console.log the actual value of text and show you guys that text isn't changing. When we do this dot trim, this just creates a new string that gets stored in our inner .html of output, it doesn't actually modify text. So to illustrate that, let's refresh this. So do a bunch of spaces for hello, click, we can see that change. But now if I go to inspect, and we look at the console here, uh, which I think is right here, we can see that we get hello, and we actually have a bunch of spaces before that. Now I realize that sometimes it's hard to see the um, actual spaces. So I'm going to show you another property that we have of strings called length. Now what this does is it's different than a method, which are what these are that we've been calling with these dot and then these brackets, it actually tells you how long the string is, which is kind of useful. So in this case, let's refresh this, let's go bunch of spaces, hello, click. And in this case, obviously, we know that the string is only of length, I believe six, but here we're getting length 23. And that's because we've added a bunch of those spaces beforehand. So it's printing out that length to us. Now this length property is really useful because sometimes like say you have a password you want to check. Well, that password has to be of length at least 250 or something like that, right? Or you know 250, 25, 10, whatever you want it to be, like you need to have it of some certain length. So what you do is you could check the length of whatever that user typed in. Say okay, is it greater than 8? Is it greater than 9? Does it contain an at sign? Does it start with a capital? Whatever, any of those, you can check all that. And if that's true, you could say, okay, this is a valid password. You can say, okay, no, that's not a valid password. So, anyways, that is a little bit about strings. I mean, I think I've showed you guys concatenation before, where essentially we've had something like, you know, hello plus, and then maybe in this case, if we do text, um, well, actually, let's do this. What I'm going to do is simply say, ask the user to type in their name now. So we'll say, actually type something, sure. And we'll say, you typed like that, and then space. Now, I think I showed you guys how this worked, but essentially concatenation with strings is just adding them together. So what we're going to do here is say, you typed, and then just add this text.trimmed value after. So in this case, if I refresh this, we can close this console window. Actually, let's get out of that. And I type hello it'll say you typed hello, right? And that'll just print that out and show that to me. Now, let's say I wanted to actually, you know, maybe print some numbers out or print some other things. Well, what I can do is I don't need to put them in strings, I could say like plus five if I wanted to. And I think I showed you guys how this works. Well, essentially, in now if I type hello, it's just going to add five to the end. So just mush that together. All right, so I think that's all for strings for right now. There is a lot more to talk about with strings. Again, try to remind me to link this website that has a bunch of different methods that you can use for strings. Um, I haven't shown all of them or even like most of them, to be honest, like there's a replace method, which will replace a certain item in the string with another item. We have split, which will split this string. We'll talk about that one later. Um, just lots of stuff you can do here. I just wanted to give you guys an introduction and illustrate kind of how these work and how you can use the methods and you know how I did something like text.trim, even though text isn't actually string, but it's storing the string value, stuff like that. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed, as always, leave a like, subscribe to the channel down below, and I'll see you guys in another JavaScript tutorial.